Hi, I'm Heather, and today in Tasting History, we'll be making two recipes, popcorn balls and peanut brittle. These recipes come from the 1905 book, The Candy Maker's Manual for the Household, by Colorado City candy maker, Cal O. Enos. The Candy Maker's Manual for the Household was published in the spring of 1905 by the Iris Publishing Company, which was operated by the Colorado City Iris newspaper. Between 1,000 and 3,000 copies were published, but now only two known copies survive. The University of Chicago Library has one, and local historian and collector Ray Turner has the second. Ray kindly loaned his copy to Pikes Peak Library District Special Collections, where it was scanned for republication. After many requests from friends, Cal O. Enos wrote the book. He says in its foreword that his goal was to make it simple enough to be understood by those not acquainted with the art of making candy, as well as to serve as a ready reference for those that are. He also very kindly added his address and invited readers to call on or write to him with their questions. For these two recipes you will need a baking sheet, sugar, popcorn, peanuts, baking soda, wax paper, water, a candy thermometer, a wooden spoon, glucose, and a medium or large pot. According to the Grocer's Encyclopedia, written by Artemis Ward in 1911, commercial glucose is made from cornstarch. It's described as a thick, syrupy, mildly sweet, nearly colorless product. At the time, glucose was mainly used as a table syrup and as an ingredient in jams and confectionery, especially candy making. Glucose is still used in candy making today and can be found online, at cake decorating supply stores, or at craft stores such as Joanne Fabrics and Michaels. The first recipe I'm going to make today is popcorn balls. So first I'm going to add two cups sugar, three quarter cups of water, and two thirds cup glucose into my pot. And on high heat with the wooden spoon, we're going to stir this until it begins to boil. So now that the mixture is boiling, I'm going to add my candy thermometer to the pot. And I'm going to let this boil until it reaches 236 degrees. And in the book, Cal Enos writes not to stir the mixture while it's boiling. So we're going to let it boil and not touch it. Popcorn balls were one of the most popular confections of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. While popcorn balls are referenced as early as the 1840s, the first recipe for the treat appears in E. F. Haskell's Housekeeper's Encyclopedia, published in 1861. However, no one really knows how they came about. According to legend, the popcorn ball actually invented itself. The story goes that in Nebraska, there was a year of striped weather. During this year, there was a mile-long stretch of intense heat and a mile-long stretch of heavy rain. Between these two stretches was a farm that experienced both forms of weather. Legend has it that the rain washed the sugar out of the sugar cane and the heat popped the corn in the cornfield. Because the sugar cane was grown on a hill, the sugar ran down into the cornfield, rolling the corn into giant balls. Regardless of how popcorn balls really came about, though, this tasty and economical treat is still widely enjoyed today. Now that our mixture has reached 236 degrees, I'm going to remove it from the heat. And this is a really basic recipe, so you can customize it however you'd like. Today I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla and a tablespoon of butter. And I'm just going to stir that with my spoon until it's well mixed and the butter is melted. Now I'm going to very slowly pour my mixture over the popcorn. And then I'm going to stir it with my spoon until all of the popcorn is well coated. Okay. 
So now that our popcorn mixture has cooled, I'm going to start forming these into balls and putting them on a piece of wax paper. And once these have cooled completely, they'll be ready to eat. So who was the man behind the candy maker's manual? Cal O. Enos, whose full name was Clarence Oliver Enos, was born in Indiana in 1867, where he attended the Cincinnati College of Music. By 1887, he was teaching violin in Kentucky. By 1900, Cal, his wife Kitty, and their two children, Clarence and Katie, had moved to Colorado Springs, where he worked as a candy maker. At that time, Enos worked for I.N. Goodman, a wholesale and retail confectionery located in Colorado Springs. In 1903, Cal opened his own confectionery and stationery shop at 509 Colorado Avenue in Colorado City. In September of 1905, Cal moved his shop to 517 Colorado Avenue. Cal was well known as a confectioner in Colorado City and offered classes in November of 1905 with a three-week term costing $5. These candy-making classes taught recipes from Enos's book. By the end of November 1905, the Candy Maker's Manual was offered free of cost with every dollar's worth of candy purchased at his store. Our second recipe today is peanut brittle, and it begins the same way as the popcorn balls, with a mixture of two cups sugar, three quarters cup water, and two thirds cups of glucose. And once again, we're going to stir this on high heat until it begins to boil. Brittle, a hardened sugar candy, is thought to be one of the first candies ever made. The most popular form in America is peanut brittle. The peanut plant originated in South America, probably in Peru or Brazil. While peanuts were grown as a commercial crop in the U.S. in the 1700s and 1800s, they were not grown extensively. This was due partly to the fact that growing and harvesting peanuts was both slow and difficult. Around 1900, labor-saving equipment was invented for planting, harvesting, and picking peanuts. With this new equipment, demand for peanuts grew. The most popular peanut products were peanut oil, roasted and salted peanuts, peanut butter, and peanut candy. So how was peanut brittle invented? There are numerous theories. One story tells of a woman in 1890 adding baking soda to her taffy recipe instead of cream of tartar. Deciding not to waste the batch, she added peanuts to the concoction and created peanut brittle. Others say peanut brittle was brought to America from Ireland and it caught on due to the fact that peanuts were easy to grow in the South. The third story involves Tony Beaver, a lumberjack folk hero. The story goes that Beaver created peanut brittle while stopping a flood using peanuts and molasses. While saving the town, he also invented a tasty new snack. So now that my mixture is boiling, I'm going to add two cups of peanuts. And I'm going to stir these until all of the peanuts are well coated. Okay. So now that the peanuts are coated, I'm going to take this off of the heat. And I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda. one tablespoon of butter, and one teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to stir this until the butter is melted and it's completely mixed. Okay, so now that everything is well mixed, I'm going to pour this onto my baking sheet, which I've sprayed with cooking spray. And you can use your spoon to just spread that out. And 
And now you're just going to let it cool completely and once it's cold you can start breaking it into pieces. The RR Polk and Company's Colorado Springs, Colorado City, and Manitou City directory for 1905 to 1906 shows that there were 37 retail confectioners in these three communities at the time. Seven of them were in Colorado City. Confectioners and candy were not only popular in Colorado, however. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, candies such as Baby Ruth, Hershey's Bars, Cracker Jacks, Tootsie Rolls, Lifesavers, Milky Way, Gummy Bears, and many more were introduced. Here is a brief timeline of some of the major events involving candy during this time. In 1868, Richard Cadbury made the first Valentine's Day box of chocolates, starting a tradition that continues today. Also in the 1800s, the Wonderly Candy Company created candy corn. In 1893, William Wrigley Jr. introduced Juicy Fruit and Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. Moving into the 1900s, in 1901, the King Leo Pure Peppermint Stick Candy was developed. And in 1902, the New England Confectionery Company, now known as Necco, made the first conversation hearts. In 1905, the same year that the Candy Maker's Manual was published, Milton Hershey completed his six-acre factory and mass production of Hershey chocolate began. The following year, Hershey introduced chocolate kisses in their iconic foil wrapping. Looking at the 2013 edition of R.R. Polk & Company City Directory, there are 21 retail confectioners listed, three of which are in Colorado City. Clearly, people's love of candy continues today. So there you have it, popcorn balls and peanut brittle made from the 1905 book, The Candy Maker's Manual for the Household. For these recipes and many more, pick up your copy of Cal Enos' republished book at Special Collections at the Pikes Peak Library District.